Welcome back. We're now going to attack the next question on the 2019 AP Calculus AB Term 1 Standard Quiz Model. This time we're going to focus on question number 8, which actually deals with the definition of the derivative. Basically asks you to once again evaluate some limits, but each of these limits is actually representative of a particular derivative. So technically you're probably going to use more derivative definition um, techniques, der derivative techniques than you are anything else. So in looking at these guys, each of these ones is going to be evaluated, as it says in the instructions, by recognizing the definition of the derivative present. So before we dig right in, it's worth pointing out that there are really two different expressions here that we could be on the lookout for. Yep, it went up. The first of those expressions is this one. So this particular expression, which actually will be the one we're attacking in this first particular problem, is what's sometimes called the alternate definition of the derivative, although it's usually where we begin our instruction. In this case, basically you're trying to evaluate the limit, but this limit is fundamentally equivalent to f prime of c. This is literally the derivative or the slope of the function f of x at x equals c. And if you recall when we first addressed this, it had to do with taking a point on a graph that we're looking at, say that would be our point c comma f of c, and then we took another point which is x comma f of x, and then our goal was to slowly move that point closer and closer. Let's see if the system can Corroborates. There we go. Notice we just keep moving it closer and closer, so instead of having a secant line, eventually we get a tangent line. So that is our first technique. That's the first one that we're going to look at. So in this case, our goal in doing this first particular type of definition of the derivative limit is to figure out what function is actually being evaluated here, or is being differentiated here. So in looking, the function is f of x, which seems to be occurring at the very beginning. So in our case, it would be a safe bet to assume that this is the function f of x, equals 2x cubed. Now we'll point out for this one if you know some techniques like some difference of cubes you could actually do this one with just pure algebra but illustrating a concept here. So if that's f of x then our next move would be to take the derivative of f of x which in our case is going to be 6x squared. Now that we have 6x squared our last piece is to figure out what x value are we actually finding the slope at in this case or what x value are we evaluating the derivative at. So in our particular case, based on this, we see it's the limit as x goes to 7. We see the 7 in the denominator plus the 7 plugged into the 2x cubed on the right side. So that tells me we're going to be evaluating this function at x equals 7. What that's going to lead us to is our limit value is going to be 6 times 7 squared, which is 6 times 49. Now's a great time to remind you that you don't actually have to simplify any of these things, but just in case. This is then going to be the same thing, if you want to simplify it all the way, as 6 times 40 plus 6 times 9, which is going to be 240 plus 54, which is 294. So lovely arithmetic thrown in there as I wrote this question, but again, the idea is straightforward. We recognize what function is being differentiated or what function's derivative is in the definition form there. We take its derivative, and then we plug in the x value in question. So on the flip side, we have our second function that we're going to look at. And this is the other definition of the derivative, also known as typically the definition of the derivative. This one can be written a couple different ways. Some people prefer to use a delta x. I prefer an h myself. But basically, this would be the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So in this particular definition, comes from a similar setup. In this case, though, we don't have to necessarily specify which x value we're at. We can think of it as just being at a point f, x comma f of x, and then a second point that is at some x value h units away from it. So in a sense, you can imagine this is x, this is x plus h, meaning the distance between them is just h, and that means that those are our two points, and then we just set up the um, difference quotient like we would back in algebra 1 for y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and we'd eventually get this expression for the secant line slope and then we'd slowly get it closer and closer by in this case moving our h value closer and closer or smaller and smaller getting it closer and closer to zero until in a sense we have a tangent line so there is our move in this case once again we want to evaluate what the function is and figure out what the function is figure out what its derivative is, and then finally plug in the value in question. Now in this particular setup, the function is actually at the end. It says minus f of x. So in our case, we're going to look at the end of the numerator of the difference quotient. So now there is a little bit of a complication here. Up here, we just see pi square root of 64. And that's kind of frustrating because that's just a constant. That's just 8 pi. But we have to read this when looking up here. 
as seen that we don't have x plus h, we have 64 plus h, and we don't have x, but 64. So what that tells me is I think my function is actually pi times the square root of x. So I'm going to start there. From there, I'm going to take the derivative. Now, there are a couple of ways to take the derivative. I just happen to know that the square root of x's derivative is 1 over 2 square root of x. If you were less confident in that, you could instead think of the square root of x as x to the 1 half. And then you could bring down the power and get the exact same thing. So a couple different ways to get here. If you did it this way, you'd have pi times 1 half x to the negative 1 half. In whichever way you get to, you eventually get our derivative, pi divided by 2 square root of x. And so that is the derivative function. That gives us the slope at any x value. But because we have x equals 64 plugged in there, we are actually interested in what the slope is at specifically x equals 64. So I'm going to evaluate this with 64 plugged in. It's going to give me pi over 2 square root of 64, which is pi over 2 times 8, which is going to be pi over 16. And so there is our slope in question. So we've seen both definitions of the derivative or both derivative definitions themselves. When I move to the plus question, the only thing that really changes is I ask you a more complicated expression or I ask you to do something extra or maybe both. In this case, I ask you to do a little bit of both. So in looking at our expression, I notice the present of h, and as soon as I see an h, that's a reminder that, hey, I'm definitely looking at the limit as h goes to 0, definition of the derivative. So this is what we're trying to match to. So in this question, I notice there's more. It says if that limit, which we're representing, we, we assume represents the derivative of some function, is equal to negative 40, find the value of x. So we're going to have to both differentiate this function, figure out what function it is, excuse me, differentiate that function, and then solve an equation equal to negative 40 to figure out the particular x value. So in here, what I'm going to focus on is I'm going to focus once again on what the f of x value is. So I see that f of x value at the very end. So I'm going to, from reading this structure, I'm going to see that f of x is 10 over the square root of x plus 2. For those of you that are less comfortable with this, maybe even for me, I'm going to write this as 10x plus 2 to the negative 1 half power. That we've got it in good differentiable position. From here, I want to take the derivative. I know I'm eventually going to have to solve something, but let's just focus on what we can. So taking the derivative, we can use the power rule. Bring down the negative 1 half. We'll have x plus 2 to the negative 3 halves power, because that's negative 1 half minus 1. Simplifying it a little bit here, we'll get negative 5 over x, oh, yeah, that should be right, x plus 2 to the 3 halves power. So there is our derivative. And now, since that derivative is equal to the value of that limit, using the definition of the derivative, we need to set this equation equal to negative 40, and then actually go to solve. So in solving this, again, it's just pure algebra at this point with some extra little twist to it. I'm going to need to cross multiply again. That's at least my strategy for going through this, and there's a lot of different ways to get there. So in looking at this piece, if I cross multiply, I get negative 5 equals negative 40 x plus 2 to the 3 halves power. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 40. Just a good strategy to clean this up a little bit more. I'm going to get positive 1 eighth is equal to x plus 2 to the 3 halves power. Now, I want to get rid of some of these pieces. I want to simplify this a little bit. So I'm going to raise both sides to the 2 thirds power. No plus or minus is necessary here because the 3 is the uh, index in this case. So 1 eighth to the 2 thirds power is the same thing as 1 eighth squared cube rooted. And the reason I bring that up is that this is the same thing on the left side as the cube root of 1 over 64, which is 1 fourth. And of course, on the right side, we just have plain old x plus 2. So giving myself a little bit of room here, we have 1 fourth equals x plus 2 to solve. That means that x is going to be 1 fourth minus 2. If we find a common denominator, if you really want to simplify this thing, 1 fourth minus 2 is 1 fourth minus 8 fourths, which means that we get as our final answer, x equals negative 7 over 4. So there is the x value we'd need in order to make the derivative, or this limit, which is representing a particular derivative, equal negative 40.
So there you go, you've seen both different versions of the definition of the derivative, and you've seen this, these particular definition of the derivative limits evaluated nicely, as well as even in a plus context.